we begin Perk Shmin the eighth chapter in the Rams Hikas of Is Kachabim Mukhukas of Adeha, the laws of Adizar and the statue of, the, of those who serve it in the Sefer Mother Book of Knowledge, which in this Perk we continue from the theme of the previous Perk regarding the getting rid of the Abaydazara, which in this Perk we discuss specifically regarding what creates the Abaydazara and its nullification. As Ramagan's Halach Aleph regarding what becomes forbidden as Abaydazara. So Kol Shein Bitfis is Yad Adam. Whatever there is not an ability of a person to take hold of it, for example, mountains and hills which are connected and they don't, they're not something that could be grabbed by a person. And but they are so of them, and neither was it made by a person. So for example, let's say you have animals or other creatures, even though they are detached and they could be held by a person, but they weren't made by a person, never even though it was worshipped, had is a mutabanom, it is permitted to have benefit from it. Lefigur therefore, Ibdikhavim, the idol worshippers, the idolaters, Ho Ibdim Esaharim, that they worship the mountains of Esakvois and the hills of Esilonis, Hanetum Mitchilos Lapers, and the trees that were planted originally for their produce, which that obviously excludes the tree that was planted for the purpose of idolatry, but that's called Asherah, which the editor actually tells us that it is forbidden by Shadim Tistur from Baish. But if it was planted originally for fruit, and the springs that are flowing for the public, for the behema and animal, they, even though they worship, are permitted to have benefit from it. And you could eat the produce of those that were worshipped in the place of where they're still uh, growing. And and that animal itself. The animal that was only set aside for the purposes of idolatry but wasn't yet served, that for sure it's permitted to be eaten. And then of the whether it was set aside to worship it, whether it was set aside to sacrifice it, here's the materials is going to be permitted because just designating it does not make it forbidden to uh, even for hectish until some action was done with it. Now, the Medvim, when we say this, Shayna Behim and Aseras, that the animal does not become forbidden, is Kashula also by Maisa Lashem Avodazar, that no action for the purpose of idolatry was done to it. And will also by Maisa Kosher, but if he did any action to it, Asara makes it forbidden, so it's a household. Kuren Sheshachet Ba Simel Avodazar. There's these two pipes, the food pipe and the wind pipe, in the animal's neck, which is slaughtered during the Shechita. So, for example, if one of the pipes was done for the purpose of idolatry, oh, an action was done with it, that makes it forbidden. Or a sachalip in Let's say it was used in exchange for idolatry. He gave him the to get back this animal. Asar makes it forbidden. And mechin chalif chalifin. Even that which was an exchange of an exchange is also forbidden. Nishanasim dimei avodizar because the monies which were the exchange now that's used for, to buy that animal is the the monies itself of avodizar is forbidden. And therefore that is an exchange of what is forbidden. Now, when do we say this that the animal becomes forbidden through an action? Is bebehemis atzmoi? Is by his own animal? But let's say he slaughtered his friend's animal for the purpose of idolatry. Or he exchanges, uh, exchanges it. Lainasser does not become forbidden because she ain't no the dubish in the Person cannot make something that's not his forbidden. If someone bows down to a piece of ground, which was always there, Lola Sacha doesn't make it forbidden. As we said, because it doesn't have Tfisis Yad Adam. But let's say he dug over their pits, sheikh and ma'aras, caves and other types of excavations, and he dug it for the purposes of idolatry. Asari makes it forbidden because he did an action in it, then therefore it becomes forbidden. We're going to water that the waves uprooted from the ocean, and he bowed down to them. So Asari has not make it forbidden because it wasn't attached to a person, it still has the Allah as if it's attached. But the tolem but let's say he took it out with his hands. V'shtach v'lem and he bowed down to them. Then Asram, then he made it forbidden. Now Abni Har shenidaldalu the stones of a mountain that got detached. V'avadim mukayim and he served it in its place, meaning no person ever lifted it up. Again, mutaras it's permitted. Shadei in b'hem tvisi al adam and never had that a person had taken hold of it, and therefore it still has that halacha of kol shein by tvisi al adam, and therefore it's not going to become forbidden even if it was worshipped. Halacha gimel. Yisrael Shazakaf Levain Lishtachav Asla. If a Jew st- stands up a brick for the purposes of bowing down to it. Now, but he didn't bow down to it yet. But then an idol worshiper comes along and bows down to it. He makes it forbidden to have benefit from it. And the reason that is, although we said before that you cannot make something that's not yours forbidden, because standing the brick straight up that the Jew did was an action. He revealed his intention that he wants it by the Zara. So when the non Jew bows down to it, he's like the agent of the Israel and makes it forbidden, even though it's not his. So too, let's say he, he, he stands up an egg. 
even though standing it up is not so recognizable as much as a brick, and a non-Jew came along and bowed down to it, Astara, he, he makes it forbidden. So to Chotach Gedalas, if he cut a gourd or a pumpkin and something similar like that, he bows down to it, Astara made it forbidden even though it's not even whole. Let's say he bowed down to this half of the pumpkin. The other half is still connected to it. So that other half that wasn't worshipped is forbidden out of doubt because maybe this other half is it might be like a handle of the half that was worshipped and the, when the primary becomes forbidden the handle which is like a secondary becomes forbidden with it it's not clear if it's like a handle therefore out of doubt it is forbidden. Now continue on with something that is connected, which is a tree, but is forbidden. If a tree that was planted with its inception to be worshipped, that is forbidden to have benefit from it. This is known as the Asher tree that's mentioned in the Torah. Now, let's say how you eat on the tool. Let's say it was a already pre-existed planted tree. But then the Gidoi, they cut off the branches, Ufasali, they removed all the bad parts. L'shem avoid deserve the purpose of idolatry to, to worship the new growth that are going to come from now on. Or or even if they extended the tree, which they would take one of the branches and stick it into the ground, and then from there would create a new trunk. Or vehirkav, or grafting, which you take a branch of one tree and you stick it into another tree. Begufay shililan, in the body of the tree. Vaitzisirigim, and now produced branches, so, See, you have to cut up those new branches, which was done for the purpose of idolatry, but Shari and Mutter, the rest of the tree, which is, was a pre existing tree and was not worshipped, is permitted. <coughs> so, someone bows down to a tree. Although the tree itself does not become forbidden because he didn't do any action to the tree. But kol asarigim, all the branches, va'olim and the leaves, va'olav and the shoots, va'peiras and the produce, the fruits, shayitzi that it produces, kozmatru nebad, as long as it's being worshipped. Hadei lostur mano, they are forbidden to have benefit. Now ilan shayo ibdi kachav mishamrim es peiraisa. Regarding a tree that the idolaters were protecting its produce, va'im they said shemuchanim because they're prepared lasim em sheicher lebeisav adizar plani that that's when they can make the alcoholic beverages for that false deity. And they would make these, this in, in alcoholic beverage from it. They would drink it on their holiday. So this tree is for them to have benefit. Because we could presume that it's an Asherah tree. And therefore they do with this fruits like this. That's actually the laws they would do with the Asherah tree. Regarding a tree that was originally planted for the purposes of putting an, uh, the idol beneath it, so Kozman Shitacht, as long as the idol is beneath that tree, Asabana, the tree is forbidden to have benefit. Now, tell them we talk to be take the idol away from beneath it, there is a mut that's permitted, because the tree itself was not worshipped, and it's only in the function where it's serving the Abedazar. Uh, when you remove it, it's not forbidden. Now, moving on to structures. Regarding a house, that was built originally by the idolaters, that the house itself should be worshipped. And so if someone bows down to a built house, it's forbidden to have benefit from the wood and the stone, because even though now it's connected, but it was detached, it still has the halacha when it was originally detached, and all, even though it was ultimately connected, like it is detached, and therefore it could become forbidden. Now, but let's say it already was built, and then Vesidoi, and then they went and they plastered it, Vikiroi, and then they went and they made different types of uh, in, in, or, de- decorations, ornaments. L'shem of Eidazah for the purpose of idolatry. Ashen is Chadash until they made it like new. So Neit L'masha you have to take away what you introduced new. But Chidush Asmano, what was introduced new is forbidden because that was done for the purposes of Eidazah. Menesh Asul, of the because it was made to serve it. Ushah the rest of the house, which was not made for Eidazah, is much as permitted. If the... Uh, the, the idolater brings uh, the Avedizara uh, into the house. So, Kosmach Shisham, as long as the Avedizara is there, Habayas Asabana, the house is forbidden to have benefit from it. Haitziah, if they take out the Avedizara, Huta Habayas, the house becomes permitted. Pchin Eben Shachatzava Mitchila Abdus, so to a stone that was chiseled out of the mountain initially to serve it. So, Asurbana, it's forbidden to have benefit from it because it was by Avedizara of a non Jew becomes forbidden right away to have benefit from it. Now, let's say it was already hewn from the mountain. But then, they went and they formed it and then they decorated it, that it should be worshipped. 
Even if they formed it and they decorated it, they graved it into the body of the stone itself. I don't have to tell you if the decoration was only on top, not inside the stone. You just take what was introduced new, and that newness which was done for the Zaras of Benin. Since it was made to worship, and the rest of the stone is mutter, that's permitted, that does not become forbidden. Regarding a stone that the Abayi Dezer was placed on it, that makes the stone forbidden, as long as the Abayi Dezer is on top of it. Silka, if you remove the Abayi Dezer, have it the stone is permitted. If someone had his house near the temple of the, uh, of the Abayi Dezer, but not full, and his house collapsed. Aslav nicely. He's not allowed to rebuild his house because he's going to be then re- he's going to be building then part of the temple of the Vaidazar. So Kitsiasa, what should he do? He has to go within his property line, an area of four Amas, Ubaina, and then build it. Now that space that now he's not rebuilding his house, he has to fill it up with thorns or excrement, so that it should not be now utilized and as an expansion. For the temple of the Vaidazar. Let's say the wool actually was sheared half by him and half by the house of the Avaidazar. So Yodin Mechzel Mechza. It's qualified 50 50. Mechza Shaloi, the stones from his half are Mutabana, is permitted to have benefit from it. Shalabaidazar, that of the Avaidazar, is Avon of its stones, eights of its wood, Vafore, and its earth. Hakoil Azabana, all that is forbidden to have benefit. Halach above continues regarding getting rid of destroying the Avaidazar. How does one destroy the Abedizar and all the other things that are forbidden because of it? For example, the accessories with the Kribish law and their sacrifices. So, you grind it up, and you, you spray it out into the wind, even though it's going to fertilize in the ground. But since the ground with the fertilizer, it's, it's what's called Zebazegayim, permitted and forbidden making it, and therefore what's going to grow is going to be permitted. You burn it and you throw it into the Dead Sea. Allah Chazan continues regarding the plating of the Vaidazar. So, Dover She'im by Tvises Yad Adam. Even something that there is no hold that a person has over it, should never which but it was worshipped, going in, for example, Hog of Mountains, a behemoth animal, the eel in the tree. So, Avabisha never does Memodabano, although we had said that even though it was worshipped, it's it permitted to have benefit from it, but Tsipuyav, it's plating, Asurim Bahana, is forbidden to have benefit. The Rebbe does have any benefit from it. Like it's going to get lashed or something like it says in the Pasuk in the bottom. Loisach made kesav bezav. Aleim. Don't desire the gold and silver that's on them. And b'chol tzipuya v'itzkechavim. All the, the, the plating of the Abed Zaga. Harim b'chalam Hashem Shev. Is included in their accessories. Halach HaChaz continues regarding the bitl. The nullification of the Abed Zaga. Abed Zaga shal goyim. Regarding the Abed Zara, the idol of the of the non-Jew, Shabitlu Goyim, that the Gentile nullify the Kaidim Shatabal De Yisrael before it comes into the possession of a Jew, it is Matas Banat, permitted to have benefit from it. Kashnevitz is in the Pasik Psile Eloi Hey Hem the graven image of their deities you should burn in fire, which teaches Kishabol Yedenu. It's only when it comes to our hands, Vem Noigin Behem Elohus, and they're treating it with as if it's a deity, then we have to burn it. But if they nullify it, Adel Matar, and then they're going to be permitted. Now, However, if a Jew has Navidazar, in a Batayl Loyal, it can never be nullified. Even if a Gentile had a partnership in it, in Batulamayukum, his nullification is not effective at all. It's going to be forbidden to have benefit from it forever, or to Unikanese, and has to be hidden away. Even if it was an idol of a Gentile, Shaboli Adisol, but ultimately came to a Jew, and then the Gentile nullified it. In Betul and Melklum, his nullification is not effective at all. And the Surah Banal Ayans can be forbidden to have benefit from it forever. And now a Jew can never nullify an idol. Even in the possession of a Gentile who he gave him permission to nullify his idol, doesn't work. Now, Goy Cotton, a Gentile that's a minor, or Shaito, mentally deranged, in Mavat Lavai he does not have the ability to nullify the Avai Dezar. Now, a Gentile that nullifies an Avay Dezar, whether it was his own, or whether it was some, some other Gentiles, even against his will, and even if the Jews forcing him to do the nullification, it's going to be nullified. As long as the Gentile that's nullifying the Avay Dezar is an idol worshiper himself. But if, if the Gentile is not an idol worshiper himself, then his nullification is not going to be a nullification. If someone nullifies Nabi Dazar, that automatically nullifies the accessories. 
But the Mishamshel, if he only knows the, success, the accessories, Mishamshel Mutaran, so the accessories are going to be permitted. But Vihi Asur Rabbanu Kamashal Isa, but Abadizor remains forbidden as it originally was. I should have been until that's nullified. But the Kravis Abadizor now, the sacrifice of idolatry, ain't a betel em that can never be nullified once it was already sacrificed. Allah Chayyid goes through the process of how bitl actually is done. So, Ketim Abadla, how does one nullify the Abadizor? So cutter reish chatma, you cut off the tip of its nose, reish asna the tip of the edge of its ear, reish its ba, the tip of its finger, or pchasa the fanel, or if you smash you uh, the, the the image of the face, even if you don't uh, take away any of it, you just um, mush the face. Or if he sells it to a jeweler that's a Jew, a, a, a smelter. It's going to be nullified because he knows that he's going to break it down and make other vessels out of it. In contrast, if he sells it to a non-Jewish jeweler, he's not mavatlet because he thinks that maybe that jeweler will end up serving it and not breaking it. Now, avale mishkano, a mechadol agoy, but if let's say he uses it as collateral or he sells it to a Gentile, or he sells it to a Gentile, or a Jew that's not a jeweler, or let's say a building collapsed on the idol and he didn't claim it away, or let's say bandits stole it and he didn't try to claim it, or rock up and he spit in front of it, or he urinated in front of it, or he dragged it in the mud, or Zark Basitari throws excrement at it, all these different things, that is not a nullification because regarding all these things, it's not a definite proof that he's intending to move out. Like, it could be just angry momentarily, and when his anger ceases to be, then he'll go back and serve it, and therefore that would not be considered as a nullification conscious when he did something permanent like cutting off its nose. Regarding an idol, that its worshippers left it and abandoned it. So if it's Bishash at a time of peace, Mataras Bana is permitted to have benefit from it because they're bitlu. Obviously they nullified it and they didn't care for it anymore. But Bashas Muhammad was a time of war, as soon as forbidden initially in the Khua, because they didn't leave it on Nesha Muhammad because of the war. So they just they just fled, but they didn't necessarily uh, nullify it. Regarding an idol that broke by itself, it fell. So the broken piece are forbidden to have benefit from it because they serve even the broken pieces. I should have until they nullify it. So if someone finds broken pieces of an Abayi Dezara, they're forbidden to have benefit from it because maybe the Gentiles did not nullify it and the suffix of maybe he did be mvadli cannot be Maitiv Nevadai of the Isra of even the broken pieces. Now, the Maitiv shall Prakim, if it was a idol made out of different parts, the head you yachal agzir and the regular person could put it back together again. So tzarek levatul kol peruk peruk me peruk. You actually have to nullify every single part of its pieces. The main yachal agzir now it cannot be put back together by a regular person. So kimin shabitul eber echem mendo. So so once you nullify one part of it, butler kol shvam then all the broken pieces. You have to nullify every single piece individually. Halachid base mizbach avay dezarish and nifkam the altar of idolatry of an idol that became dented. Until the majority of it was smashed by the non-Jew. Whereas a bimus should nifkam, which we can explain in a moment, a bimus, which is one stone, if it got dented, muter it is permitted. What's considered a bimus and what's a mizbech? So bimus is even achas, one stone. One stone got dented, it's already bought. Mizbech, an ultra, one harp has many stones, they if it got dented, it's not going to be until the majority of it is smashed. Now, the case of the of the Markulis, how do you nullify the stones of the Markulis, which which actually is worshipped by throwing stones at it? So, just being stones is not a, a bitl. So, but it's when you build a structure out of those stones, and use it to pave the roads, or similar types of things, then they're permitted to benefit because that's a, a bitl because you're using it for something else. How do you nullify the Asherah of the Avodah tree? So, if you broke off from it a, 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 a leaf, or you cut off a, 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 a thin branch, or you took from the wood a stick or a scepter or a shashfa, or you went and you smoothed it down, not for the need, not to make it more beautiful, it's just because you needed some type of sawdust or some other utility, so then you're using it for something else, that's a nullification. But if you sanded it down for its need, to make it nicer, then the Asur then is going to be forbidden. But but those things that you cut off, that will be permitted. Now, the Maisa Shal Yisrael, but if this Shei uh, Ravid uh, was owned by a Jew, then Bein Letzarka, Bein Shalol Letzarka, whether he's taking off these things for the need of the Avid Zarchi, whether or not, Bein Hiu, Bein Shvea, whether the tree or whether the, 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 the dust that you're sawing off, it's all going to be forbidden forever. Because the Avid Zarchi Yisrael, never has a nullification, there but none of these options are going to work.